so sonographers have to communicate everything uh, from news of an early pregnancy loss um, through to a very late term loss. Uh, you know, maybe there's someone who's expecting to give birth to their baby next week and then they find out that sadly their baby has died. And in between that, sonographers can identify a really wide range of health conditions um, or anomalies that may signal the presence of a health condition. And they have no time to work out how they're going to communicate this news. Um, so if you can imagine with doctors, uh, they usually get the blood test results or whatever it is they need to communicate in advance and they can have a bit of time thinking about what they're going to say before they communicate this. With sonographers, it's in real time. It's like the doctor receiving the blood test results while the patient sits in front of them. Um, as a sonographer does a scan, the expectant parents watch their face. They know immediately when something is wrong and then the sonographer has to tell them what they found. It's, it's very challenging. I mean, I think this is part of the reason why these news uh, protocols are, are really needed. I mean, partly it's it's about uh, ensuring a better experience in terms of um, emotional well-being for expectant parents. But immediately after receiving unexpected news, expectant parents have to make decisions either around pregnancy management um, in the event of a miscarriage or a stillbirth um, or around invasive testing or potentially termination if a health condition is identified. Um, and what we know is that that news delivery event, that's the very, that's the moment where this journey begins for an expectant parent. And it's really important that it's done as well and as appropriately as possible so that parents can move forwards and make the best decisions for them.